You might not be familiar with this backyard. This is basically my last chance to shoot anything in the south. I guess over here I have to fight with street lights and neighbors much more than I have to do at home. But I will not let this chance pass. Join me this night to photograph the Horsehead Nebula. Alright, let me give you this situation over here. Alright, thank you. We have the north. Beautiful. We have the west. Amazing clear view. We have the east. Oh, that's all right. And the south. Oh, it could be better, but it's nice. Originally, in my, in my real home, I'd say, there would be only a house over here. No chance. The Orion constellation will rise exactly over here. And if I place the telescope at the right location, all intact, the Devil Star touches the flagpole perfectly. So I think I'm gonna set up a little bit maybe in the back here. It's good that you can see nothing. And I already checked the Larium. I have a pretty nice composition for the horse head. And over there, the south, I think that Orion will be there at about 11. But I still have some time to shoot it at that point, so I hope to get at least three hours of, I don't know, three or five minute subs this night. And if I do, this will be amazing. But let me introduce you to the star of this show. New backyard, new garage. I was here two times already, trying to photograph the horse at Nebula, trying to set up a video two times and a failure each time because of clouds and unexpected fog. The weather in the beginning of January was weird. There was a lot of moisture in the air and as soon as the temperature hit the dew point, the whole county, let's say, was just flooded with fog. It was weird, really. It went from completely clear to I can't see my hand in a matter of 10 seconds. I've had some fights with the equipment the last time. And that's why I added a few updates to the scope. Let me show you. Since the last video, I think over 1000 people came into this channel. And I think it's about time to actually introduce the telescope I'm shooting with tonight, because I did some modifications and this kit looks amazing. I think I'm gonna nickname this the power kit or any, anything else. If you have some ideas for nicknames for this beauty over here, let me know. What do we have here? Well, this is the, as you can see, the Omegon Pro Apochromatic Quadruplet Telescope. It has a focal length of 450mm and an aperture of 71mm. It has four glass lenses of the best possible glass for astrophotography. The modifications I did to it, I added a new dovetail bar on the bottom because the original one, the one up here, is too short to balance the scope correctly. So I did that and I actually I found some screws lying around and I managed to mount the small guide scope, the Omegon 60mm macro speed on the top there. On the back of this telescope we have the ZWO ASI 294 MC Pro, a dedicated astronomy camera. This one is one shot color. It will record a color image in one shot. On the side on the finder scope bracket we have a red dot. I don't use the star alignment routine anymore, I use plate solving, but with these wide focal lengths plate solving can take quite some time and actually fail a couple times. That's why I use this red dot to find my targets immediately. On the top the guide scope. In the back is the Altair GP Cam 2, a small color guide camera with which I will lock a guide star and synchronize this information with the telescope mount. Things you can't see in here, actually only one thing. There is a filter threaded right into the 2 inch extension tube. This filter is the IDAS Nebula Booster. This filter is basically a narrowband filter, so it isolates specific wavelengths of light and blocks everything else. 
The specialty of this filter is that it passes HA, O3 and a little bit of S2. The point is that you can, with a color camera, shoot basically an RGB image. You can create an, a synthetic green channel in post-processing. You can create an RGB image with a one-shot color camera and cut out every bit of light pollution, which is absolutely necessary over here at this location, because the Frankfurt airport is just around the corner, one of the biggest airports in Europe. I think it's gotten dark enough already to stand up. Polaris is visible, I hope so at least. My routine is as soon as Polaris is there to start the setup and I will do that right now. So wish me luck that everything clears up tonight. Alright, the setup is done. You can see the laptop. One of the problems last time was that I had only one do strap and the do kicked in and so I was basically frantic <laughs> I was basically running back and forth switching out the do band of the main scope and the guide scope main scope guide scope it didn't work well and the night was a complete failure So this time I have my power source over here the car plug plugging into the do heater controller and I think I will turn them on very soon because the air is very moist. Well, the whole grass here is pretty wet which is not a good thing for the scope and for the equipment either. But I have two do heater bands now which is great. One for the main scope and one for the guide scope. So do on the lens, water on the lens will definitely not be a problem this time. Everything is set up, the cables are a mess, I don't care. Especially over here. I'm gonna... I think I have some solutions for this problem in a few weeks maybe, but not yet. The camera is roughly in focus, but I think I will turn it into a more precise focus before balancing the whole thing. And this kit just looks amazing. This whole telescope is actually smaller than you might think, but it's really powerful. And one more thing I wanted to show you. Ooh, this looks familiar, doesn't it? We'll have to turn the light off now. And I'll have to talk for 8 seconds now and entertain you, I think. But the result... Right here. This over here is the constellation Orion. You can see in the middle Orion spelled the three stars. Actually, I know the names of these stars way before I start with astrophotography. Alnitak, Alnilam and Mintaka from the bottom to the top. And you can't see Betelgeuse in the top left. And no people, it's not gonna blow up. I'm sorry to burst your bubble, literally. And in the in the down right you can see real Regal, I think that's how in, in German we in German we just say Regal, but it doesn't matter really. And many refer to it as the sword of Orion. It's not in focus actually, but it doesn't matter. The thing you can see here are these three stars. The top one and the bottom one are actually stars, but the middle one is the Orion Nebula. And this is more than amazing that a camera can pick this up so easily. But our target for the night is Olnitak, the Devil Star. And I think in the final image you will know why it's called the Devil Star. A bright star like this makes editing a hell of a nightmare. It's the bottom in the middle right here. The Horset Nebula is right here. And very close to it, the Flame Nebula, slightly to the left. And some other objects in Orion. For example, we have, of course, Orion Nebula. Down here at Regal we have the Witch Hat Nebula. And I think many people refer to it as the Casper Nebula, the small refraction nebula that's hiding up here. Barnard's Loop, of course, the gigantic hydrogen cloud. 
on the left side of Orion. And one of the most, I think actually the Horset is the fam most famous nebula target because many people know it from Hubble. But the Rosette Nebula is hiding behind Betelgeuse, more to the left. This will be a target for another night. I hope that I can catch it this winter or, winter or spring. This is Orion. This is gonna be amazing. Stay tuned.